everybody how you all doing good day to you all welcome again to another video on my channel my name is blessing and this is my blessed home tv i want to say thank you to every one of you who already subscribed who keep coming back who support me on this channel and i welcome you heartily who is coming here for the first time please join us here subscribe to this channel thank you so much for doing so this is going to be a very quick video i want to make my own commentary concerning the trending videos of uh, george freud incidents that is you know going around the whole place right now and you know there are a lot of people on the streets right now in minneapolis and uh, it's a tragedy what has happened and uh, this is not to say that this is going to be the last one but i just wanted to make this commentary because uh, i i don't know i saw that video uh, like somebody sent me that video two days ago you know just as it was going on and i was really worried about uh, you know the uh, the the kind of courage you know um the boldness this man that was kneeling on this man's neck had I, i've never seen anything like that like in broad daylight he, he was kneeling on somebody and the man was crying that you know i can't breathe i can't breathe and he was kind of you know dipping his knee inside a little bit more with his hands in his pocket like this man is not a threat to them in any way he was dragged out of his car like i don't even know what it means like that you are just going on your way having your plans ahead of you driving in your car and you are stopped and then you know that's gonna be it for you i don't understand this kind of rage that these people have and in this boldness to commit this kind of atrocity and to think that this has been going on for so long long my heart really goes out to these people that have been under this kind of situation all these years you know we that we grew up in nigeria and went to school in nigeria we never know of all this thing we don't hear of all this thing that is happening can you believe that we don't know anything about transatlantic slavery yes we don't Nobody teaches us all this kind of a thing and they in turn, they don't even know our struggles. Like we have this scenario where people of African descent are scattered all over the globe, but they know nothing about the struggles that each one of them is going on wherever they are. Like, you know, they, they will be looking at people in the motherland and be saying one thing or the other. And the people in the motherland, when they go to the US and they will be thinking, oh, these people, they are lazy. Yeah, look at, they can't walk. You know, like there is this oblivion that is in between everybody that we don't really understand each other's struggles and this is because of in our schools in nigeria for example we don't know what is going on in the world the first time you know that you're a black person or that you're a person of color is when you come out of nigeria you don't know that like i'm a black person when we're in nigeria we are with each other we are talking about our ethnicity we are talking about like for example i am Igbo. some other person will be yoruba and this will be our discussions your your ethnicity you know we don't even know this categories that we have been given here in the west until when we come here then we realize oh so you know you are actually in this category and the worst part of it is we don't even know anything about all this mistreatment that is going on across the globe if not for today maybe i don't know people who are growing up today in africa perhaps because of social media and the internet they'll have more understanding of what is going on but while we were growing up there was nothing like that so we didn't even know that you know having this kind of uh, uh, skin is a problem we didn't know all these things and when people from this side uh, from the west or wherever they even came from came to our country they were welcomed we were friendly we didn't understand we don't know the dynamics of how the things are play and we still don't know and even those of us here in the diaspora you still see people championing ethnic by godry kind of you know finding reason why you are not the same with you like they, they still don't see themselves the way the rest of the world are seeing us so i think that one of the way to go forward in this thing is first of all to like assimilate the struggles of all other group of africans wherever they may be because it's the same thing that is going on in different ways when i finally came to this understanding of what was going on in the west and what was going on and what has gone down in america like my heart kind of broke down for these people and like there is expression that we use in Igbo language you say madu toro no no ago like like you you kind of survived even in the mouth of a lion this is how i feel for them this is how my heart goes out to them because they've been through so much through so much and you know 
they are kind of um disorganized there's a lot of uh, trauma that they have experienced and you know there are still some part of that trauma that will be exhibited in different forms that may not be pleasant and you know they are just kind of uh not in, in control of whatever is happening in, in their lives and you know it's like you have this permanent visitor that you never be at home like you are here but but you are not at home you are always a visitor you will forever be a visitor so i think another solution is for us to find a way to create a homeland that people can look to and there will be some kind of dignity to it there will be some kind of homecoming starting from the heart that you can acknowledge oh look at this place everything is going well here yeah? or you can you know think about it even in your heart i feel good with that thought that in this place in africa something is going on well you know things are going on well but up until then i think um, as long as we don't have anywhere that we can probably say this is ours and it's worthy of everything that everybody tries to create in their own space i think that it's going to continue like this this is one of the reasons why i support the restoration of the sovereign state of biafra because in biafra i believe we can do better i believe we may have the control mechanisms to do better for ourselves and uh, uh, thinking that all these kind of structures that are put together by people who are treating you like this will be for your own benefit i think it's an illusion i think more better will be for us to find some kind of solution like you know to kind of restructure the country and give the regions some powers or completely go in their separate way so that each region can develop at their own pace and we'll still be good neighbors you know trade together relate with each other in peace and harmony and you know all this wrangling all this you are evil you are this you are this because um we are not helping the matter because uh, a bigger thing there are bigger fishes to fry like we have these people who have been displaced who are a place that they, they cannot call home and we are also at home we cannot feel at home eh, we are trying to escape our own home and this trouble just continues and continues and continues but anyway long story short i'm very very glad that president trump has come out to speak on this issue right now and he said and promised that there will be justice and let me read what he has already said let me quote him here at my request the fbi and the department of justice are already well into an investigation as to the very sad and tragic death in minnesota of george floyd i have asked for this investigation to be as Pedited and greatly appreciate all of the work done by local law enforcement. My heart goes out to judges, family, and friends. Justice will be served. So I'm glad that President Trump has come out to say this. And I think that, uh, yeah, uh, there's nothing you can say somebody should do or not do. It is just what it is. And uh, people will react however they see fit or however it is possible for them. But for me personally, I want to say uh, rest in peace to George Floyd. I send out my condolences to his family. My heart goes out to all of you all over the U.S. in the diaspora who are passing through all these problems. Even we here, it's not very rosy, but we thank God for his mercies and his blessings. People here are more disciplined. The police here is not comparable to what is going on there. The German police are really, really disciplined. And if you just follow the rules, you will never have any encounter with German police. That's just the truth. They will not bother you. They don't bother you and they follow their rules they do everything diligently so yeah i'm grateful that i'm here at this point in time i don't know where i will be tomorrow so my heart goes out to everyone who is under this kind of persecution i pray that god almighty will visit us and that we will find some respite in all this and some time in the future by the grace of god i will have biafra to point to my children and say Look at Biafra, the state of Biafra, you know, it's a place you can call home. This is my own hope. I don't know about you. So I just wanted to make this commentary and commiserate with everyone that is involved in this carnage and also to send out my condolences to the family of the people who have lost their loved ones in all these attacks. And I also want to thank the President Trump for coming out and speaking out and ordering the feds to go out for the investigation and promising justice, which is always very important. Justice, he has promised and will expect.
despair that he would deliver thank you so much for watching i hope that you join me subscribe to my channel and i'll see you very soon in another video bye for now thank you so much